year is 2010 and you've just arrived home from GameStop with a fresh new copy of Call of Duty Black Ops. You eagerly put the disc into your Xbox 360 and launch the campaign. The story immediately piques your interest as you play as the main character Mason who is getting interrogated and tortured for some numbers. The story then continues as you search through Mason's memories hopping from country to country of forming secret black operations for the CIA. You encounter many thrilling twists and turns throughout the story and never cease to enjoy the awesome fun and badass gameplay that this game has to offer. If you are like myself and thoroughly enjoyed the campaign of Black Ops, then you may be curious about some of the real life history behind the locations, missions and characters featured in this game. In this video we will look at these factors by going mission by mission and separating what's historical fact and what's fiction in each one. So without further ado, let's do this. Black Ops' first mission starts in Santa Maria, Cuba during the Bay of Pigs invasion on April 17, 1961, where you and your team of Bowman and Woods are part of a CIA assassination team known as Operation 40. You collect intel on Fidel Castro's location from an informant, fight your way through the streets and escape in a car. You are then brought to a plantation where you infiltrate and assassinate Castro before shooting your way to an airfield and attempting to escape on a plane. The runway gets blocked and your character Mason jumps out of the aircraft, clears the runway and gets captured in the process. We then see that you killed a double agent and our real Castro hands Mason over as a gift to a Russian general by the name of Dragovich. In real life, the Bay of Pigs invasion was a landing operation on the southwest coast of Cuba in 1961 by CIA-backed Cuban exiles who opposed Fidel Castro's Cuban revolution. 1500 Cuban exiles as part of Brigade 2506 with the aid from the US Navy and Air Force were sent into the Bay of Pigs with a smaller force landing in the east of Cuba to create confusion. They were quickly outmatched and outnumbered by the Cuban forces as Castro had already learned of the invasion prior to it unfolding. The goal of the attack was to inspire other Cubans to take up arms and overthrow Castro's communist government and establish a new democratic government that would be more friendly to the USA. The invasion was a massive failure for the US and it resulted in almost 300 casualties, the capture of 1,002 Cuban exiles and a further tensions between the two countries which eventually led to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Operation 40 was the code name for a CIA sponsored counterintelligence group made up of Cuban exiles. They were an assassination group that would assassinate enemy members of militaries, political parties and foreign agents. They took part in the Bay of Pigs invasion alongside Brigade 2506 on April 17, 1961. Black Ops got the date and involvement to US Special Forces and Air Force in this mission correct and it shows the Cuban exiles getting defeated and the fleeing of the few American forces involved. What the game got incorrect was the exact locations and events depicted as there was no assassination attempt of Fidel Castro on that day. Also, the real Operation 40 was composed of Cuban exiles and not Americans as shown in the game. This mission caused quite a stir in Cuba back in 2010 as the Cuban government found the assassination of Castro depicted in this mission insulting and stated on their website that, quote, what the United States government did not achieve in more than 50 years, it now tries to do virtually, end quote. This accusation was not entirely unjust though, because the CIA did attempt to assassinate Castro 638 times, but still failed. Even Castro himself once said, if surviving assassination attempts were an Olympic event, I'd win the gold medal. After Mason gets captured, he is sent to the Rakuta Gulag. He befriends a Russian named Reznov and together they attempt to escape the labor camp with their fellow prisoners on October 8, 1963. By using makeshift weapons, stolen guns and even a minigun, they fight their way to freedom. Towards the end of the mission, Reznov and Mason are the only ones left alive and escape the boundaries of the camp on motorcycles. Mason then successfully jumps onto a train, but Reznov fails to and the mission ends with you becoming free as Dresnov drives away. Brakuta was a real labor camp located 160 kilometers above the Arctic Circle in the Khmer Republic of Soviet Russia. Officially called Brakuta Correct of Special Labor Camp No. 6, it operated from 1932 till 1962 and held prisoners of war, enemies of the state, dissidents, political prisoners and convicted criminals. The camp imprisoned 73,000 inmates at its peak 
and forced them to provide labour for their nearby mine and logging operation. A railway was constructed to ship the coal and wood out of the Gulag and was the one used by Mason at the end of the mission. Brakuta was one of the largest and most inhumane labour camps in the Gulag system due to its freezing climate and terrible conditions. Hunger caused by poor rations and extreme exhaustion was rampant and many died of starvation and illness. Polar days meant that there would be three months of constant daylight during the summer which further added to the misery of the inmates. A riot started in Vrakuta on July 19, 1953 as inmates demanded more rights and wages. It lasted two weeks and some small concessions were made at first but the inmates wanted more. The riots then turned violent and just like in the game, the guards opened fire to prisoners and the army was called in for support. Around 60 prisoners were killed with hundreds more wounded. The dates of the real riot and the one depicted in Black Ops do not match, and it was in fact impossible for the inmates to be in Verkuda in 1963 as the camp permanently closed in 1962 due to Khrushchev's reforms. In USDD, you and Hudson are flown to the Pentagon where you first meet Secretary Robert McNamara who tells you about the dangers of the Soviet General Nikita Dragovich. You are then brought inside the Pentagon where you meet 35th US President John F. Kennedy inside the nerve center under the Pentagon building. Kennedy then tells you more about Dragovich and instructs you to kill him. Most of this mission is fictional other than McManara being the real Secretary of Defense from 1961 to 1968 and John F. Kennedy serving as the US President at this time as well. Dragovich, Mason and Hudson were completely fictional characters and the nerve center shown in this mission was not depicted accurately and instead looked like the picture shown on screen now. The real nerve center in the Pentagon is called the National Military Command Center and was more accurately portrayed in the zombies mode as the starting room on the map 5. The map featured red phones which supposedly was the direct telephone hotline between the Pentagon and the Kremlin in the USSR. This red phone was a myth and the real Washington to Moscow hotline used teletype equipment instead. Both the campaign and the zombie map also featured the DEFCON system, which is the five graduated levels of readiness that the US military uses. It increases in severity with DEFCON 5 meaning no danger to DEFCON 1 signaling the outbreak of nuclear war. This mission tasks you and Woods with infiltrating the Soviet Baikonur Cosmodrome where you save your captured ally Weaver, blow up the Soyuz 2 rocket, kill the eccentric group scientists in sight, and finally attempt but fail to execute Dragovich. The Baikonur Cosmodrome is the world's first and largest spaceport for orbital and human launches. It is located in the desert steep of southern Kazakhstan and was constructed by the USSR in the late 50s as the base of operations for the Soviet space program. Many famous and historical important space flights were launched from this base, such as the first operational intercontinental ballistic missile, the first satellite Sputnik 1, the first spacecraft to travel close to the moon Luna 1, the first crewed and orbital flight by Yuri Gagarin, and the flight of the first woman in space, Valentina Tereshkova. On the mission, we were informed that Soyuz 1 and Soyuz 2 rockets were being launched around the same time. The real Soyuz 1 and 2 rockets launched at separate times, with the Soyuz 1 lifting off on April 27, 1967, and the Soyuz 2 on the 25th of October 1968. The original plan for both rockets was to then lift off at similar times and perform a rendezvous and exchange crew members of each rocket in space before returning to Earth. This plan was scrapped though due to the Soyuz 2 not being able to take off because of thunderstorms at night at the Bakken or Cosmotron. In the mission, we were also informed that the Ascension Group members at the Cosadrone were Nazis that were co-opted by the Soviets after World War II. This did in fact happen and was part of Operation Ozakoviakim. On October 22nd, 1946, over 2,000 German specialists along with their families were removed from the Soviet-occupied zones of post-World War II and were employed in the Soviet Union. These Nazi scientists provided a huge role in the Soviet space program and were both sides of the space race due to the knowledge they had. During World War II, these rocket engineers developed a series of ballistic missiles including the V-2 rocket. Their research and materials from these missiles along with the knowledge of them was used by the USSR to recreate their own version of the V-2 rocket in 1948 called the R-1. These scientists then continued to help develop more ballistic missiles 
such as the R-14 and G-4. The creation of these missiles gave useful experience and knowledge to the Soviet experts, which then allowed them to construct more rocket ships, including the Soyuz 11A-511 that we see in the mission. Operation Flashpoint, along with the Ascension Group mentioned in Executive Order, were not real, and the exact dates are off by a few years. The simultaneous launch of Soyuz 1 and 2 was not all that far-fetched, as the original saw it that way before it had been changed. The location and the Soviets using ex-Nazi scientists for the space program was depicted more accurately though. SOG begins in the K-Sang military camp, where you first meet Hudson and Woods before driving to the base to help defend it from an invasion from the North Vietnamese army. During the drive there, Woods tells you about the MACV SOG and about the K-Sang base. MACV SOG, standing for Military Assistance Command Vietnam Studios and Observations Group, was a real, highly classified multi-service special operations unit which conducted covert, unconventional warfare operations before and during the Vietnam War. The unit was created in January of 1964 due to the heightened US military intervention in Southeast Asia and consisted of personnel from the US Army Special Forces, Navy SEALs, Air Force, Marine Corps and the CIA. The mission of the organization was to execute an intense program of harassment, diversion, political pressure, the capture of prisoners, physical destruction, acquisition of intelligence, generation of propaganda, and a diversion of resources against the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. Mac Phi Sog was disbanded in 1971 when the US started pulling forces out of Vietnam. The K Sang military base was a US Marine Corps outpost located south of the Vietnam demilitarized zone. The camp serves as a patrol base for blocking enemy infiltration from Laos, as a base for SOG operations to harass the enemy in Laos, as an airstrip for reconnaissance planes surveying the Ho Chi Minh Trail, as a western anchor for defence south of the DMZ, and as an eventual jump off point for ground operations. It was built in 1962 and was abandoned and destroyed by American forces in July of 1968. The mission in Black Ops depicts the start of the Battle of Khe Sang, which is when the North Vietnamese forces attempted to siege and invade the Khe Sang base. Two to three divisions of Vietnamese soldiers along with artillery bombardments attacked the base on the 21st of January 1968. The assault on the base was used as a decoy so that the North Vietnamese army would face less resistance in their true objective of invading the cities part of the first phase of the Tet Offensive. The conflict lasted five months and resulted with a withdrawal of US forces from the camp and the death of around 10,000 NVA soldiers and 500 US Marines. We next go to Hyao City, where you are tasked with finding and extracting a Soviet defector. We find Reznov, who escaped Rakuta alive, and he gives us intel on Dragovich's plan to attack the USA. The level ends with you holding out on the streets until you escape via a boat. On the 30th of January 1968, the North Vietnam Army launched the Tet Offensive, which saw them invade over 100 cities. Hue City was one of the first and most important places that the NVA wanted to attack due to its location and large size. They also believed that by attacking major cities in the south, such as Hue, would cause the morale of the citizens and the South Vietnam Army to collapse and cause the US to leave Vietnam. On the 31st of January 1968, the Viet Cong attacked the city and caught the Allies by surprise. The Battle of Hue lasted a month and was one of the bloodiest and most fierce conflicts in the Vietnam War. The brutal close quarter combat fighting in the city was captured by cameras and broadcasted back to America where it further aided in the anti-war movement. An estimated 150 US Marines, 400 South Vietnamese troops and 6,000 North Vietnamese soldiers died as a result of the fighting in the city. Over 5,000 citizens were also killed in the battle, with many of them being executed by Viet Cong as depicted in the game. The Battle of Hue ended on the 2nd of March 1968 with an American South Vietnamese victory. The conflict came at a heavy cost for both sides as on top of all the casualties, the city was almost completely left in ruins and thousands of more citizens and soldiers were injured. At the beginning of the mission, you and your team infiltrate the Mac V compound and collect intel on Soviet involvement in Vietnam. This compound was real and was located on Hong Vuan Street in Hue. MACV advisor team number 3 were stationed there and the building was fiercely fought over from the 31st January 
to the 2nd of February. The Soviet Union substantially supplied the North Vietnamese Army with supplies, weapons, munitions and surface to air missiles during the Vietnam War. They also gave around 3,000 Soviet troops, T-54 and 55 tanks as shown in the mission and they even allegedly shot down some US planes. It is important to note that the Soviet help given to the MVA absolutely paled in comparison to the aid that America and their allies gave to the South Vietnam Army, with the USA alone providing over 2.7 million soldiers throughout the 20 year long war. In the mission, we used Dragon Brett rounds in a SPAS-12 shotgun. These shells do exist, but are not used by any military or police force because of the massive fire hazard they possess. This level presents us in the walled city of Kowloon, where you play as Hudson and along with Weaver, torture a scientist named Dr. Clark for information on a biochemical weapon he helped develop for Dragovic called Nova 6. Dragovic's Svetna soldiers arrive to kill Dr. Clark, and you try to escape the city with him. Clark tells you the location of Dragovic's base in the Ura Mountains, but you soon get overwhelmed by the enemy, and he gets shot before he can explain the meaning of the numbers that keep getting played to Mason in the interrogation room. The mission ends with you and Weaver escaping the city with the next objective of advancing on the Ura Mountains base. Most of this mission is made up, including Dr. Clark, the existence of Nova 6, and the Spetnaz attack with Spetnaz itself just meaning an umbrella term for Russian special forces. The city shown in the level was real though, so I can tell you about that. Unfortunately, I am unable to inform you about some of the mysteries featured in this mission, such as how the hell do you and Weaver not get shot once here, and who in the name of Jesus is this fellow waving to? Are you blind man? Anyway, Kowloon Wall City was an ungoverned and extremely densely populated Chinese enclave located within Kowloon City in British Hong Kong. It took up about 7 acres in total with a wall bordering the outside and was at one point the world's most densely populated city with an estimated 33,000 residents living in the over 300 buildings within it. The campaign level depicts planes flying close over the city. This was accurate and was because it was built near Kai Tak Airport. A height limit of 13 to 14 stories even had to be imposed on the city due to it being in the flight path of planes going to the airport. The city being ungoverned by Hong Kong caused it to become a haven for crime and drugs with many criminal groups known as triads inhabiting within it. Kowloon Walled City was demolished in 1993 due to the terrible sanitary and quality of life within it. It was then replaced with a park called Kowloon Walled City Park which is just about the most original name I've ever heard in my life. We are brought back in time to October of 1945, just months after the surrender of Nazi Germany. You play as Reznov and are joined by Dmitri, who you play as in Call of Duty World at War, and by your commando Dragovich and his right hand man Kravchenko. You invade a Nazi base and capture a German scientist named Steiner. After the base falls, you go to a ship stuck in the ice. Inside the boat, we find Nova 6 gas stored inside V2 rockets and Kravchenko and Dragovich betray Reznov and Dmitri by attempting to use them as test subjects to show the lethality of the severely toxic nerve agent. Dmitri dies by the gas, but before it can be deposed upon Reznov, British forces arrive to attempt to seize it for themselves. You then escape the boat before blowing it up and sinking it in the hope of ridding the world of the horrid, inhumane Nova 6 gas. During World War II, the Germans did actually manage to establish bases in the Arctic Circle in such regions as Lapland, the Spitsbergen Islands in Norway and Greenland. The Arctic Circle in the 1940s was a very difficult place to reach and inhabit. Because of this, all the real recorded German bases in the Arctic Circle were a lot smaller and a lot less dangerous, with most of them being weather stations. While playing as Reznov in the mission, we witness our fellow comrades killing the surrendering Nazi soldiers. This encapsulates the vile hatred between the USSR and Nazi Germany during the war due to how brutally the Germans destroyed, looted and massacred millions of Soviet citizens when they invaded the country in 1941. We get to physically see German V2 rockets inside the boat on this level. I have already mentioned these missiles and other similar versions of it earlier in executive order but I'd like to expand on this one in particular. The V2 rocket was developed in Germany from 1936 
by the efforts of scientists led by Werner von Braun and was first successfully launched in October of 1942. Thousands of these were fired at major cities in allied countries such as France, Britain, Belgium and the Netherlands. The explosions killed an estimated 9,000 military personnel and civilians and around 12,000 forced laborers and concentration camp prisoners died as a result of being forced to participate in the production of the weapon. The V2 carried a powerful motor capable of launching the rocket more than 80 kilometers above the earth at a trajectory of around 190 kilometers. Fueled by liquid ethanol and oxygen, the V2 rocket could reach speeds of over 5,000 kilometers per hour and reach targets over 300 kilometers away. These characteristics made it more superior than any other built before and effectively made it the world's first space rocket. Victor Charlie brings us back to 1968 and begins with you trapped in a crashed helicopter just south of the DMZ in Vietnam. Once you escape, you and your team attack Viet Cong in the nearby villages. After battling through the settlements, we go to a Viet Cong rat tunnel and enter accompanied by Reznov and Swift. During the extreme close quarter fighting, Swift sadly gets slain and you and Reznov continue to a secret compound in the tunnels. You collect intel and quickly escape before exfilling in a helicopter. The rat tunnel shown in this mission did actually exist and were first made by the communist forces in Vietnam during the first Indochina war. During the Vietnam war, these tunnels were greatly expanded to accommodate for food and weapon caches, hospitals, headquarters, barracks and living quarters for NVA soldiers. They also served for communication and supply routes and hiding spots for the Viet Cong to use during combat. US and allied soldiers known as tunnel rats volunteered to enter, clear collect intel, map, and sometimes destroy these tunnels. They were equipped with only a pistol, flashlight, and knife, and had to be of low stature to maneuver in the tight spaces. Usually two tunnel rats would enter together, and one would listen for enemy movement, while the other would radio to the surface to map the tunnels. The Viet Cong often set booby traps with hand grenades, mines, punji spikes, and even venomous snakes, spiders, and scorpions inside the underground passages. The tunnels would sometimes collapse, due to them being built poorly, and the Viet Cong often dug the tunnels with many 60 to 120 degree angles incorporated to make it harder to shoot straight and to also help deflect explosions. The job of the tunnel rats was one of the most treacherous and dangerous in the whole Vietnam War, with them suffering a high mortality rate of around 33%. This level kicks us off in Laos in 1968. We are tasked with investigating a crashed Soviet plane to see if it is carrying Nova 6. We journey to the wreckage by fighting MVA in an armed boat while Symphony for the Devil by the Rolling Stones plays in the background. Once we arrive upon land, we then fight our way to the downed plane and discover that there is no Nova 6 inside. The cargo aircraft then collapses after being shot by Svetnaz helicopters and you, Woods, Bowman and Reznov get captured by Dragovich and Kravchenko. The events in this mission are made up with there being no such Soviet cargo aircraft shot down in Laos during the Vietnam War. So rather than talking about the events at the level, we'll have a look at the location and some of the vehicles depicted. While on the boat, we sail down the Mekong River in Laos. This delta area is comprised of rice paddies and was home to around 8 million South Vietnam civilians during the war. The area was the Viet Cong's largest stronghold and was used by them for transportation and for its natural geography. Starting in early 1967, the river saw much conflict between the Viet Cong and the US 9th Infantry Division and units of the US Navy swift boats and hovercraft. The mobile ravine force was then created to operate in a difficult terrain and were responsible for carrying out many major operations in the Mekong Delta region. During this level, and in many others in the game, we see the iconic UH-1 helicopter. The Bell UH-1 Iroquois, nicknamed the Huey, is a utility military helicopter developed by Bell Helicopters in 1952 for the United States Army. Over 16,000 of these have been produced since 1960, and it was used as the first turbo-powered chopper produced for the US Army. The Huey helicopter performed many roles, including troop transport, medivac, and bush ranger gunships for armed support. The ones tasked with ground attack or armed escort could be outfitted with mounted M60 light machine guns, miniguns, a M75 grenade launcher, AGM 22B wire guided anti tank missiles, or XM157 7 tube rocket launchers. The helicopter is infamous due to its adaptability, 
ruggedness, and extended use, with over 7,000 of them being deployed in the Vietnam War. The helicopter is also famous for being featured in like literally every Vietnam War movie and video game ever, usually accompanied with Fortunate Son. The boat used in the level is also real, and is called a PBR, standing for Patrol Boat Ravine. More than 250 of these fiberglass hull vessels were used in the war between 1966 to 1975, and they were the most used boat in the Ravine Patrol Force. Although the PBR did not have strong armour or shielding, it more than made up for it due to its high speed, manoeuvrability and firepower, with it usually featuring twin M2 HB 50 calibre machine guns in a rotating shield tub, one or two M60 light machine guns and MK19 grenade launchers. Lastly, we look at the crashed Soviet plane. The model in the game is based on the American C-130 Hercules. Produced by Lockheed in 1954, the C-130 is the longest consecutively produced military aircraft and is mainly used by the US, Canadian and British Air Force. It was designed as a cargo, medivac and troop transport and was used in the Vietnam War from 1962 to 1970. The four turboprop engined aircraft dominated airlift operations in Vietnam due to its 15 ton payload and its ability to use unprepared runways and rapidly unload cargo. The versatile airframe of the C-130 is used in many other variants of the aircraft including the infamous AC-130 gunship, which I'm sure you know and love from the Modern Warfare series of games. It doesn't make sense why the Soviets would have a C-130 though, with their most common and closest resembling cargo plane to it being their own Antonov AN-12, but I'd assume the game developers just did it this way to save time by reusing assets. Weapons of Mass Destruction, acromized to WMD, starts us with taking off and flying the SR-71 Blackbird. You use the advanced camera technology on board to help guide Hudson and Weaver's team to the enemy facility in the Ural Mountains. You then continuously switch perspectives with Hudson on the ground and the operator in the Blackbird until you reach the Soviet base on Mount Yamantau. Your team destroyed a relay station before gliding down to the near town. You fight your way to Dragovich's facility where Steiner tells you through a radio recording that Soviet sleeper agents have been placed all across America and will dispose Nova 6 all over the continent once they receive a number sequence from Dragovich. Steiner offers that you rescue him in return for him informing Yi on how to stop the number sequence from being broadcasted. You and your team then escape on a truck with your next objective of extracting Steiner from the base on Rebert Island. The SR-71 Blackbird depicted in this mission is real and was produced by Lockheed in 1966. Following the previous downing of an American U-2 spy plane over the Soviet Union, the US Air Force decided to employ a more fast and high altitude flying plane to prevent them from being detected or shot down by any Soviet fighter jets or anti-aircraft missiles. They chose Lockheed to produce such an aircraft, and after many prototypes, the SR-71 Blackbird was made. The reconnaissance plane could reach a max speed of 3,529 km per hour, or Mach 3.3. It is still the world's fastest aircraft to this day, even after 55 plus years of aeronautical engineering. It was so fast that the hull of the aircraft could reach temperatures of over 260 degrees while flying, so it had to be made almost completely out of titanium, as standard aircraft aluminum would have easily softened. The elegant yet strange shape and black colour of the aircraft were also chosen to help reduce its radar signature. The Blackbird was successfully flown over Korea and Vietnam, but was never officially flown into Soviet airspace due to how disastrous it would be to the US if one happened to get shot down. Instead, they flew on the border of the USSR and used its advanced cameras and radars to look hundreds of miles into the country. For years, the SR-71 Blackbird was basically invulnerable as no Soviet aircraft or surface-to-air missile could match its speed or high cruising altitude of 85,000 feet. But in the 1980s, Soviet fighter planes and anti-aircraft missiles improved and started to pose a genuine threat to the Blackbird. The spy planes were also costing the US defense budget massively, with each plane costing over 300 million a year to operate. And although none of them were ever shot down, over a third of the 50 Blackbirds ever made were destroyed in accidents. On top of this, advancements in spy satellites and aerial drones started to make the aircraft less useful. So in 1996, the SR-71 Blackbird was retired. The game shows us using an infrared video camera in the Blackbird to guide the squad. The Blackbird did have infrared cameras, 
but could not do the type of surveillance depicted in the game. The Soviet bases shown in the mission are all also not real, but there is a secret bunker or nuclear facility that started being built under Mount Yamantau by Russia in 1996. So perhaps the secrecy of this facility and area inspired Treyarch to locate the mission on Mount Yamantau. This level begins with you, Woods and Bowman imprisoned in an MVA camp. You and your team are forced to play Russian roulette and Bowman gets violently beaten to death by a Svetnaz operative. You and Woods then escape from the camp and fight your way to Kravchenko's location by using a stolen Soviet helicopter. Ye free more POWs and reunite with Reznov before finding and attempting to kill Kravchenko. Woods then sacrifices himself to kill him and the mission ends with you now only accompanied with Reznov. Towards the start of the level, we see your team being treated extremely harshly by the MVA. According to real captured American POWs, this was sadly the case, with them often being subjected to many different methods of torture, such as beatings, starvation, isolation in so-called tiger cages, solitary confinement, sensory deprivation, and they were even sometimes forced to march out in streets to be beaten by North Vietnamese civilians. At least 766 US troops became POWs in the Vietnam War, and 144 of them died while in captivity. It was not until Operation Homecoming was launched in 1973 that most of these American prisoners were freed and allowed to return home. The Soviet helicopter shown in this level is called a Mil Mi-24. The Hind was designed by Mil in the 1960s to act as a gunship and troop transport for the Soviet Union. It was and still is operated by many different countries and is most known for being used for air support, anti-tank warfare and air-to-air -air combat in conflicts such as the Afghan and Iraq wars. It is one of the deadliest and most versatile aircraft in the world due to its high armament, good mobility and its ability to carry up to 8 soldiers in its main cabin. The Mil Mi-24 did not enter service until 1972 and was never present in the Vietnam War, so it would have been impossible to have one in Laos in 1968 as the game depicts. In this mission, and all the others set in the Vietnam War, we see both sides using unconventional weapons with the USA using napalm and flamethrowers and the MVA and Soviets using Nova 6. These types of weapons were used in the Vietnam War, but predominantly by the US and Allied forces as the Soviets didn't have nearly as much as a direct impact in the conflict as the game makes out and the MVA relied more on guerrilla warfare tactics. Napalm was used in Vietnam by US and Allied forces in flamethrowers to clear bunkers, destroy vegetation and burn NVA villages. It was also used heavily in the form of bomb payloads in planes. Over 388,000 tons of it was dropped by the USA in Vietnam between 1963 and 1973. Napalm burns at a temperature of over 1000 degrees Celsius and is extremely deadly due to its ability to stick to skin and burn rapidly. As an incendiary, it is imprecise and resulted in the killing of thousands of innocent Vietnamese civilians. But the worst of the unconventional weapons used in the war were in the form of toxic chemicals used by the USA in Operation Ranch Hand. Starting in 1962, US forces started to use chemical weapons such as Agent Orange, Agent White and Agent Purple to destroy crops and jungle vegetation that the Viet Cong were using for cover and concealment. Nearly 90 million litres of herbicides were sprayed over an area of 77,000 square kilometres throughout the whole war, and they destroyed tons of crops and about 20% of all jungles in South Vietnam. Agent Orange was the main herbicide used by the US, and it caused high damage to human health due to its toxic byproduct of TCDD. According to Vietnamese documents, Exposure to Agent Orange has caused health problems to an estimated 3 million Vietnamese civilians, of which 400,000 have died or ended up with serious life-impacting disabilities. Over 500,000 children have been born with birth defects due to the chemicals, even after Operation Ranch Hand ended in 1971. The use of herbicides and napalm largely turned public opinion against the war and aided in its lessening of use in the early 1970s. But sadly, the effects of the chemical weapons had already left its mark and continued to affect the people of Vietnam even to this day. The level begins with Mason and Reznov, now gone rogue, and attempting to kill Steiner on Revert Island before Hudson and Weaver can reach him. You sneak through the docks to a research facility before fighting your way to Steiner's position, where Reznov then shoots and kills him in vengeance. We then switch perspectives to Hudson and Weaver fighting their way to the lab. They reach Steiner, but it is too late. They discover that Reznov was just a figment of Mason's imagination, and they watch as he alone shoots Steiner. 
They then arrest Mason and bring him back to America to be interrogated. The level's location of Revert Island is real and is located in the Aral Sea in Uzbekistan. Following World War II, the Soviet Union wanted to construct a research facility to investigate biochemical weapons. They needed a remote island far within the USSR's borders that was hot and didn't have much wildlife to spread any diseases. Fuzirastenya Island, or Rebert Island, matched all these characteristics. So in 1948, all the local fishermen were removed from the island and a small laboratory was built. In 1954, the lab was then expanded into a full research facility called Arousk 7. At its peak, some 1,500 people consisting of scientists, their families and guards lived on the island. The local town of Kantovek was especially built for the island's residents and was more well off than other Soviet towns without having a social club, a cinema, a stadium, shops and warm beaches. The scientists on Rebert Island researched and genetically modified deadly diseases such as anthrax, smallpox, plague, brucellosis and tularemia to make them more resistant to existing cures. Many domestic animals were shipped to the island and used as test subjects including between 200 and 300 monkeys every year. These animals are depicted in the lab in the mission. In 1971, Irousk 7 leaked a brown gas containing smallpox, which was inhaled by a scientist who then spread the disease to 10 others, resulting in 3 deaths. A year later, two fishermen were found dead from the plague near the island. 50,000 saiga antelope grazing nearby all died within an hour, and local fishermen started to report reeling in entire nets of dead fish. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, the facility was burnt down and abandoned. During the abandonment, over 200 tons of anthrax was unsafely buried, so in 2001, an American team was sent in to excavate and properly dispose of the barrels of anthrax spores. Today, Revert Island is no longer an island, as the Aral Sea has almost completely dried up. The remains of Arousk 7 and the town of Kantovek still stand though, and serve as a reminder of the dangerous and brutal times of the Cold War. Now back at the interrogation room, we discover that Hudson was the interrogator and he informs us that now that Steiner is dead, Mason is the only one who knows how to translate the number sequence to find where the numbers are being broadcasted from. Hudson reveals that while Mason was in Verkuta, Steiner and Kravchenko implanted the number sequence containing the location of the broadcast station into his head and tried to brainwash him into being a sleeper agent to act on their behalf. The brainwashing failed on Mason as he was too resilient to it, so he was sent back to prison where Reznov then overrode Mason's brainwashing and changed his objectives by forcefully programming his mind to want to kill Reznov's enemies Dragovich, Kraschenko and Steiner. The attack on the USA was imminent, with Soviet sleeper agents planted in every state and ready to release Nova 6 all over the country once they received the numbers broadcast. In a last ditch effort, Hudson plays the number sequence one last time and Mason searches through his memories and then remembers that the broadcast station is located on the cargo ship Rasulka in Cuba. While in the interrogation room, Mason goes through brainwashing by electroshock therapy and the use of stimulus drugs. During the Cold War, such brainwashing techniques were used by the CIA in what became known as Project MKUltra. Once the Cold War had started, fears of the Soviet Union and communism were very prevalent in the United States. The CIA wanted to always be one step ahead of their ideological enemies, so much so that they started to set aside morals and laws to achieve this goal. Project MKUltra was an example of this. Starting in 1953, the CIA began to conduct research into brainwashing and mind control. They wanted to find a way to completely wipe the memories of a person and implant new ones so that they could gain control of their actions. The CIA chose US subjects such as prisoners, people with terminal illness and even mental health patients to perform tests on, often without their permission or knowledge. These human test subjects would be subjected to many forms of interrogation and torture such as electric shock therapy, isolation, hypnosis and the use of barbiturates, biochemical weapons and hallucinogenic drugs such as LSD. Some subjects will be tested on for many weeks or months on end and will be forced to listen to audio messages looped continually. Project MKUltra was not revealed to the public until 1975 and is still shrouded in mystery as most of the documents relating to it were destroyed by the CIA. Several deaths have been linked to the project and only 14 of the estimated thousands of people affected 
were ever notified and rescued. The project was scrapped in 1973 and concluded that mind control was not possible. In the mission, Hudson mentions that the Soviet Union was performing similar mind control experiments to Project MKUltra. This is true, as the Soviets had a similar program that included experiments in parapsychology. Like MKUltra, this program included research into the effects of electromagnetic waves on humans and led to the development of psychotronic weapons, which were intended to alter people's minds. Soviet scientists believed that the human brain could transmit and receive a certain kind of high-frequency electromagnetic radiation. They even developed a device called a serpan that could generate and store this energy. Much less is known about the Soviet mind control program, as documents relating to it are still classified, even after the program was ended in 2003. The number of broadcast stations shown in the game are actually a real thing. Taught to be first used during the First World War, Number broadcast stations are believed to be used by many government's intelligence agencies to communicate with their spies. They used powerful shortwave transmitters to send out signals hundreds of kilometers away. The number stations were most used during the Cold War and would play constant static noise which would then be occasionally interrupted by a series of numbers, letters, music or other noises. The system of communication was pioneered by the Soviets and involved broadcasting a series of randomly generated numbers or letters on a public station that the spies could then listen into and decode by using a one-time key. This key was not to be shared and had to be destroyed after being used to protect the message from being intercepted. The secret messages being broadcasted publicly made tracking down the location of the spies almost impossible due to the amount of regular people listening in across the world. This makes it a better and more secure option to use for secret communications than the internet, and it's the reason that many still broadcast to this day. Well-known examples of these number stations include the Russian UBV-76, English EO-3, and Cuban VO-2A. Some theories also state that they act as a dead hand system in the case of a nuclear war, but the real reasons for the majority of number stations is not entirely clear due to nations never revealing their true purpose. This is it, the final mission of the Black Ops campaign. It begins with your team assaulting their Asulka ship while in an attack helicopter. You and your team then board the vessel and fight your way down to the lower decks. Once there, you discover that the numbers are actually going to be broadcasted from an underwater facility located on the seabed beneath the Asulka. You and Hudson then suit up and swim down to the base before swiftly attacking your way to Dragovich's position. Dragovich shoots Hudson and you aggressively drown him to death, but not before he foreshadows JFK's assassination. The facility then gets blown up by the Air Force and you and Hudson swim your way to the surface as Reznov congratulates you on your success. Once at the surface, Weaver then carries you onto a boat and you graciously look at what you've accomplished and bask in your victory. The cutscene then takes a bone chilling turn as footage of JFK disembarking Air Force One and entering his motorcade at Houston, Texas plays. Mason whispers details of the president's assassination, such as the caliber of the rifle used and the location and time. The footage then rewinds and slowly zooms in revealing Mason in the audience, heavily indicating that his brainwashing was not fully overrode and that Mason was the one who assassinated John F. Kennedy on that frightful morning of November 22nd, 1963. Pretty much the entirety of this mission is not real, with there never being an underwater number station or any such attempted massive attack on the USA. The idea of Lee Harvey Oswald not being the sole attacker of the JFK assassination is highly rumored among many conspiracy theorists though. Such theories as JFK being killed by a second shooter hidden on a grassy knoll or by a man with an umbrella or as being a mafia hit are frequently discussed. Some even believe that the assassination was pulled off by the CIA, which would sort of match up with the game as Mason was in the CIA. Many point to suspicious details as evidence, including the route of the motorcade, the trajectory that the bullet would have to take to hit Kennedy, the position of Lee Harvey Oswald, and the difficulty of the shot he would have had to pull off. Due to the suspicious nature of the assassination, and Oswald himself being killed two days after it. The murder of the 35th US President John F. Kennedy will forever be surrounded in mystery. 
So who knows, maybe everyone's favourite number of Seth's character really was behind this historically infamous assassination. While making this video, I was quite surprised with the amount of real history that is featured in this game. Nearly every mission is at least loosely based off actual historical events. The use of history really adds to the game by implanting an extra layer of immersion. It makes it feel as if some of the levels are almost like a simulator by letting you experience events that actually happened and mattered. It is a major feature into why I enjoy this game so much and unfortunately is a quality that many of the futuristic Call of Duties lack. Black Ops 1 really shows how history can be learned in a cool, fun and interactive way and is the single reason that got me into the subject at a young age. This is my first YouTube video I have ever made and it took me a long while to make, so please do leave your thoughts, feedback or criticism in the comment section below. If you would like to see me make similar videos on other Call of Duties or any other video game series then also let me know. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed then please consider liking and subscribing and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Goodbye now.